Hey everybody, this is Colin podcasting about real estate and welcome to show 21. Today I had the absolute privilege of speaking with Sean and Joni Wolfswinkle. Uh, they are a Texas power couple and we talk about their 20 years working in real estate together. Um, Sean and Joni began their journey back in college. They were childhood sweethearts since the age of 15 and they've worked together pretty much ever since they went into university and they've built a thriving group of companies in Texas and New Mexico that span property management with over 1500 doors, rehabs and new construction. They're building over 100 a year. They have a plumbing business, a podcast. Uh, they have a business that trains virtual assistants. They're, they're a very impressive couple. They have 35 plus staff and they've had a fantastic journey. Um, you know, During the show, we discussed how they wholesale and invested their way through college, their individual strengths and how they complement each other the many challenges they faced and how they overcame them, and, you know, the, their approach to take, taking or avoiding gambles in real estate, how they constantly push themselves and their staff to grow. Uh, obviously, the dramatic changes they had to make to their business during COVID. Can you imagine, uh, you know, business with 1,500 properties under management, a new construction, uh, turnkey rehabs and all those staff to manage? It's, it's been a, a roller coaster year. And, you know, we also dig, you know, dig quite deeply into how they, you know, uh, achieve a balance between their family, their health and, and their business and, and a lot of other things. They were super generous with their time. They're very open to answering any any question I could think of asking them. And I think you're really going to enjoy the conversation. And just before we head on over to them, you know, bear in mind that I've got a website you guys can check out, colininvestments.com. I've, I've written multiple reports there that you can download just by plugging in your email address. You'll find all the previous podcasts and videos of the previous podcasts. You'll be able to schedule a call with me if you want to have a chat for 20 minutes or an hour or whatever about your own real estate journey. There's different options in there. You'll find me on social media, of course, under either Colin Investment or Colin G. Murphy. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the usual places. So find me there if you can. But that's enough about me. Uh, this is a really good podcast, guys. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's head on over to Sean and Joni. Sean and Joni Wolfswick, and how are you both doing? I'm delighted to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Colin, for having us. Thank you. We're, uh, yeah, it's a real honor. We're, uh, we're excited to do this. So, and hopefully, uh, add some value to all your listeners. Absolutely. So. I really think so. I really think you will. I'm, I'm big fans. And I know over the last 20 years, you've both got a stellar reputation in, in real estate circles, especially in, in Texas and, and New Mexico. But mm -hmm. we kind of, before we get to all the cool stuff you're doing now, can you bring us back to the start of your journey and, and let us know how it all began? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, so we started at a really young age. So we, um, and it's, it's a unique, uh, experience. So we started 20 years ago, which uh, Joni and I are high school sweethearts. So we uh, um, started dating when we were 15 years old. Wow. And uh, so we've been together longer than we've been apart. Yeah, um, we just celebrated our 17 year wedding anniversary. Yeah. And so, congrats. <laughs> thank you. So uh, for us, it, it started in college. So uh, I was 19 years old. I had the opportunity to uh, stay in New Mexico and go to a, a New Mexico college, which they paid, they had a lottery scholarship that paid for um, my schooling. And so mm -hmm. I used the money that my parents had set aside to uh, a small amount of money to go to um, a late night infomercial seminar that they had sold. And so I bought uh, with Russ Whitney, if you remember that name way back, but uh, mm -hmm. a uh, educational program, boot camps, uh, mentorship program. And uh, that's how we got our start. So um, we started as wholesalers. Um, so we okay. started yeah, so wholesaling properties um, throughout college. That's what that was the bulk of what we did. Um, one of the mentorships that we and that, that was key to our, um, our success early on was that uh, one of the mentors that we, we got around, um, we paid for him up front. But mm -hmm. uh, he, he ended up working with us, um, you know, one on one and doing deals with us and partnering with us. And so because you're like 19, 20 years yeah, old, exactly. you're not exactly a savvy real estate investor at, at this stage. You could have right. made all yeah. sorts of crazy decisions. Exactly. So, yeah, and we had no money. I think that we, our first property we purchased and bought on a credit card. So. Yeah, so I don't recommend that to anybody, but that's all the money we had was we did a cash advance on a credit card and that's what we used to buy the property. 
Um, what kind so of we, properties are we talking about? Are we talking about ghetto houses? Are we talking about yeah. bits of land? What, what kind of stuff are you doing? Uh, so 20 years ago, that you know, for $20,000, we could buy a run decent down. rundown house. Um, so probably C, B minus neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we bought a rundown property for 20 grand. Uh, we had to close on it because it was a bank owned property at that time. And that's what we did a cash advance on a credit card. And then we flipped it and just wholesale it to another investor as is. So that was really our first deal. Yeah. Brilliant. And so did you both continue like and finish your college education doing real estate the whole time and then go straight into real estate? Or did you go apart and get kind of corporate jobs, you know, go apart in your, your career wise and then come back together again? How did that work? So Sean, actually, he, he finished up and got his degree in entrepreneurial studies at the, um, at the University of New Mexico. And uh-huh. I, you know, I was so passionate about real estate. I'm like, you know, why do I need to go back to college? So I actually went and got my broker's license um, around 20 years old. And so wow. or real estate license and then became mm-hmm. a broker in New Mexico. So, um, yeah, so I, I have my broker's license now in Texas and New Mexico. Yeah, but we, we, we never had corporate jobs. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, um, we bought and sold houses throughout college. So we, uh, at that time, also at later, like our fourth or fifth year in college, we started doing a lot of pre foreclosure investing. So we would go to class from like eight to 12. And then mm-hmm. we would go visit our job sites and knock on pre foreclosure doors uh, in the afternoon. And so wow. that was our college experience. So we, we, we didn't party much. We partied more as adults than we had in college. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, we, no, we, we, uh, uh, we were very focused, very driven. Um, yeah at a very young age, which I know is hard for a lot of people to understand, but I don't know if it was. But where did that come from? What, where did you get those values or where did you get that instinct from? Did, was that from your parents? Did something happen when you were younger that gave you that work ethic? A little bit of both. So um, for me, I mean, I, my mom was a single mom, you know, she worked two jobs to support my brother and I. And so Mm -hmm. early on, it's like, I had a job at 15 just because I wanted to help her, you know, support me and so right. um i just had that drive early on and, and sean i think the same thing but I it mean, was a, it, we, we had very opposite polar opposite uh upbringing so she came from a very um didn't have much po- money. yeah poverty where i was the son of a doctor and and um joni says i was born with a silver spoon <laughs> in my mouth but but at the same uh time i had uh, my parents were my dad was from the midwest very hardworking uh parents right. so mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see that. So I never had a, my mom was an OBGYN. So she, you know, was gone delivering babies. And I, uh, she didn't tuck, I don't ever remember my mom being there to like tuck me in bed. So, uh, I spent a lot of time, uh, being raised by nurses waiting for my mom to complete a delivery while we were just sitting there. So like, I, I, it, we saw the work ethic that our, my parents had. And I think mm-hmm. that translated like into my brother and I, so Joni's was because she didn't come from it and then and she wanted more in life and i came from a very hard-working driven family and so right which i carried that um with me later into life so it's funny i think i was somewhere in between where i grew up in a, a fishing village in ireland and i worked jobs since i was 14 15 sweeping floors and bars and all that kind of stuff and my mom worked in a hotel my dad was a civil servant but i was still one of the, the kind of richer kids among the people I hung out with in the village. But when I went to university, it was a total different social strata. And I was the only guy working my way through university among my circle of friends. And they were the, the doctors and lawyers' sons and all the rest uh, of it. So I kind of had a little bit of both. And I had that hybrid of, of feeling more privileged than the guys in the village, but feeling um, that I had to kind of you know hustle a lot more compared to mm-hmm. the guys in, in the university. Yeah, yeah, well, it was funny because like in college, you know, most of our friends were out partying, you know, fraternities, sororities, and Sean and I, like our weekends was uh, with friends playing cash flow board games, you know, like the rich dad, poor dad's cash flow game. Yeah. <laughs> our friends were also much older as well, so. We, we always tended to, and we still do today, I don't know, what it, we, we hang out with people that are probably 10 years older than us, and it, it's always <laughs> been that way because we they understood our mindset and what we were trying to accomplish. And so um, it's been, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a unique, but um, it helped us and, and, and we got further ahead because we were associating with people that 
um, wanted more out of life or at a different stage in life. And, mm -hmm. uh, and even today that a lot of the people we hang out with are in their forties and fifties, cause they're thinking about retirement. They're thinking about their assets and you know, they're not, yeah. Yeah. It, it's just a different, um, so it sounds mindset. like you, you didn't fall into the, the trap that a lot of, you know, 20 something year olds fall into when they start making a lot of money for the first time and right. they spend it as fast right. as, as they're earning it. Right. And then they kind of, you know, smarten up a bit in their thirties and get, and get mm -hmm. real about actually living below your means and investing the excess and all the rest of it. Sounds like you guys, maybe thanks to hanging around with those older people that you never uh, had those temptations because the people around you weren't doing it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We, we were involved in masterminds early on, you know, that's, that's where most of our friends are, are yeah. through the master real estate masterminds, you know, uh, business masterminds. Yeah. So I think association is key to uh, definitely to, to getting ahead in life and, and mm -hmm. surrounding yourself. And just, if, if nothing else, more than mindset wise um, and, and, um, because it, it's so powerful the way you think and uh, which controls your actions and all that. So I just think that uh, mm. associating yourself with the right people is, is key. So and I think so. And kind of bearing that in mind, you know, you're, you're associating with the right people. You're, you're trying to combine the different types of strengths between different people. I mean, you know, you guys have been working together for so long. How would, and you know each other obviously extremely well in terms of, you know, work strengths and weaknesses. What would you say your, your individual strengths are? And how do they complement each other in the different types of businesses that you have? Yeah, so I think Sean's more of the uh, the vision. We're both drivers, obviously, um, but uh, Sean's more of the visionary. You know. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I tend to big picture guy. Big picture. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when we pivoted, like one one of our biggest pivots was actually pivoting into the turnkey space. So we had been buying and selling houses for over ten years much, you know, like the TV shows where you buy something, fix it up, put it on MLS and sell it retail. Um, and that we did that for 10 years. And so when we, it was my vision that said, you know what, like there's, there's, we're missing opportunity. We had built up our own big rental portfolio and we just mm -hmm. saw the need right after the recession. Um, you know, I don't want to have, I don't want these roller coasters. I don't want to have to wait, wonder if the market doesn't come back, you know, all these questions. So that's mm -hmm. when we pivoted into the turnkey space and started our management companies and took us down a whole different road, which led us to where we are today. But yeah, I like to see the, I can see visions or see where we want to go, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I'm not probably the best at execution. I mean, I know the pieces that need to happen, but mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't like to. And I'm, I'm the executor. So you give yeah. me something and I'll go execute yeah. it. <laughs> so right. a, lot, a lot of our, over the 20 years, for years, it was like, I'd come up with something and then Joni would go and just, she's. And some, sometimes a little too fast. He's like, wait, slow down. We need to think about it for a bit. And I'm like, no, let's just go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that's that's a perfect compliment. Someone comes up with the, vi the vision and then someone else implements the vision. It's very rare to have both in the same person, but I guess having both in, in a in a married couple is is as good, if not better. That's just great. And it's, and it's, don't get me wrong, it comes with challenges. I mean, we uh, um, definitely had to figure out that, that dynamic and that space sure. and also a sense of humbleness where, um, you know, at times we both have to understand that we both are owners in the company. Uh, mm -hmm. We both want the same goals at the end. And mm -hmm. it's this, it's not a competition. It's not a, um, uh, an ego thing where like one of us has to be the boss and make the decisions. If we let each other lead, um, mm -hmm. if, and if it's something that maybe one is doing that we feel is not the right direction, uh, privately, you know, having a conversation and, and talking about it, you know, um, that, hey, I think we should go this direction. And, and I don't necessarily agree with that, but I, you know, we try not to do it publicly in front of the staff or, sure. but uh, it, it's definitely- yeah, a, a, it's, it's challenging. It's taken us years to develop. I mean, early on, we you kind of like, you, you defined our roles, you know, Sean's uh, mainly in charge of, you know, Texas turnkey properties and the construction, you know, uh, development part of it. And Mm -hmm. I've led the property management. So it's been, it works really well. Yeah. 
so we, we found each other's role, like what departments were running, and that's helped a lot. Um, it's always as you grow and develop a staff, and um, that's always a different dynamic because it's it's hard to I bet. yeah have two bosses. And I mean, I'm sure you with you and your partner, there's probably been <laughs> challenges and disagreements, and but especially as you have a lot of staff, it's um, who do they report to? How do they? How do those lines? Um, and for years, it would be. If they wanted something, they would go to Sean. Yeah, <laughs> I was. A, I said really, yes. You're, I said, you're soft touch. Yeah, I said I said yes a lot more than others. So for certain things, they'd come to to me, and then other times they'd go to Joni. But it, um, as it's grown, of course, there's been layers built out into the company. Um, yeah. So, so describe and, your company to us, and what 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 companies do you have, and what do they do, and how many staff do you have to to manage nowadays? Yeah. So we. Uh, um, so we, we, we have the turnkey company, which, um, buys, renovates, or builds new construction homes to rent. And then we sell them to investors across the country. Uh, we have two different management companies. So one in Houston and one in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and we're managing about 1500 doors, just over 1500 doors, um, total. Um, and we build, um, in the turnkey space, we're doing about a hundred houses a year. Um, majority of that being new construction. And then uh, we have a plumbing company, Mr. Reuter Plumbing um, in New Mexico. And mm -hmm. uh, the newest one is a VA company. So we have uh, a oh, virtual yeah, virtual assistant business out of uh, Mexico. And so, uh, and it's the virtual assistant company is very tailored to property the property management space. Um, so we train the VAs get, or we call them remote team members but they get trained within our company and then mm -hmm. before, they, before they go out and work for another company. But so uh, for property management companies that, you know, it's a, it's a tough business. It's a- It uh, is. Um, a lot of moving parts. And so, you know, we've, um, they've been, they've actually been really helpful to allow our business to scale. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, in a, you know, it's not a, it's not a huge margin business. And so uh, right. you need, obviously your big, biggest expense is going to be uh, employees or mm -hmm. staff. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if you can get it at a fraction of the cost, then uh, it makes sense. And we found very talented individuals like college educated, very yep. well spoken and they, they do an awesome job for us. Right. So. I'm, I'm a big fan of VAs. You know, I've, I've used them for all sorts of stuff, particularly for, for helping me with property sourcing, you know, just you, you, and like you say, I'm dealing with a college educated lady in India that just happens to have a ton of experience coming through public records in Florida. I mean, what are the odds? Right. And they, you know, fill out a spreadsheet, look up permit mm -hmm. records, fill in the bed, bath, square footage, put in photos, look at judgment amounts, put the judgments in a folder and just doing like that whole 80, 20 thing, doing the 80% grunt work. So I can just look at the 20% the and just analyze it all and decide what I want to do. So VAs are brilliant and it could be designing a website, doing the audio for a podcast. It, it could, you can use VAs yes, for all sorts sir. of stuff, as you know, far better than me with a <laughs> VA. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it, it's a misconception. People like they, they're, you, now we treat them just as if they're an employee with our, here in our company or, or mm -hmm. here locally. I mean, we involve them. Um, and that's key too, is yeah. they have to be part of your team. You know, if, Right. Uh, you hire them and then you don't you don't meet with them regularly then you're probably going to fail i mean they we huddle in every morning with mm -hmm. our remote team members we have you know meetings regularly with them so they're part of our team and and in, in, in today's environment too with with this year with covid and everything it's uh um you know it it, it it's key to build your company out to where it can we work remotely as as, mm -hmm. as and so, like Joni said, we're we're big fans of a, a book called Scaling Up. Um, okay, a lot of people use like EOS or one of those. Um, we're we're big fans of Scaling Up. Um, mm -hmm. So we um, we have a daily huddle that we meet the whole company, all the entities, all everybody meets at a, a certain time every morning. It's about fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. We talk about stocks and um, priorities, priorities, uh, good news, and any big announcements. But a lot of like things can any issues or 
it, it, the whole company sees it, but then also any wins, everybody sees it across the whole company. Um, mm -hmm. But it involves our, our VAs and, and everybody remotely. And that's how we also manage two different markets um, efficiently is with those meetings. Uh, each, each department meets. Uh, we, Thursdays, we have a customer service roundup, which, um, you know, Brett does a very good job of running a customer service oriented, because all our businesses are service oriented companies. And sure. so uh, we, we focus heavily on customer service and, and control and uh, controlling and conversations, control, yeah. command and control. And we do a talk, lot. Of, go ahead. Yeah. Talk to me about you know, obviously to create a big company and have all these moving parts, you need to have some sort of culture. You need to have, you know, people need to be a certain type of person to, to kind of buy into your, your vision. I mean, what, what is it that you look for in employees beyond, you know, the basic ability to do the job that in order that they're going to fit well into your culture and, and help you grow? You know, self de development is um, really important in our company and our culture. And so, like, if you're not willing to, you know, put yourself out there and want to mm -hmm. grow and continue to grow, you're probably not going to be a good fit for our company. Um, you know, because we, uh, one of the things that we do, training is key, obviously, but uh, okay. we do the Grant Cardone University here at our company. So, everybody, you know, is taking those courses once a week, even our remote team members. Wow, um, and they love it. It's like, what other company is actually purchasing, you know, courses like this for their employees, right? Um, and we also, you know, we, we have a book club where we read together. Um, and so, uh, I mean, if, if you're not willing to, you know, improve yourself and self-develop, then you're probably not a good fit for us. Uh, and being challenged, I think, is a big, um, we have a lot of strong grit. I like the word gritty. Um, mm. I don't know if that's a, but like really like mm -hmm. yeah so they uh one of our core values is uh, uh we enjoy challenges and the results of overcoming them and so okay. um because i mean one of the things with like joni and i as, as people or leaders is there's going to be challenges in life you know especially like this year people were faced with a lot yeah. of challenges mm -hmm. and um what, one of the things that Joni and I have has got us to where we are is because even in the face of those challenges, we've always stepped up and we've always, we never complained and we've always had each other's backs and supported one another. And, mm -hmm. but we've always stepped up to those challenges and met them and figured out a, either we plowed through them or figured out a door to get around them. But um, something that I think anymore today, we kind of, strive like i know people try to make their lives easy but like that's part of life is enjoying those challenges and, and trust me sometimes they're like they're ones you don't want um but I, I understand there's people have gone through some serious challenges but i mean we enjoy the the challenges and overcoming them and figuring out, i think we get a lot of passion out of that anymore today um i like that and i like what you said earlier about humility and i think a lot of uh, successful business owners have that humility maybe below mm -hmm. a, a facade of, of bravado and, and there's nothing that teaches humility more than getting your ass kicked you know on a regular <laughs> basis as a business owner yeah. but you know, you, you spoke about facing challenges and enjoying the process of overcoming a challenge or, or i mean can you recall one, one or two important ones in, in, in your life, in your business, and, and how you face them and, and turn them around? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, early on in our career, I mean, we started obviously in New Mexico, and um, we mm -hmm. were in, you know, we really enjoyed the pre foreclosure market. So Sean and I would go and knock on doors and make agreements with homeowners. And in New Mexico, it was a longer process. The, it was a judicial state, so the foreclosure process was a lot longer. And mm -hmm. um, then in Texas, Texas is real quick when the notice goes out and you know it's auctioned off in 30 days. So um, right. we decided to move to Texas, and that was a big step for us. You know, just Sean and I, we just got up, sold our house in New Mexico, and really, I think we probably only had maybe like $15,000 in our bank account at that time, you know? Wow. And so that wasn't a lot to live off of. Um, and when we moved here, um, you know, it was a roller coaster. I mean, we would have. What, what year did you move there? To give us some context. Yeah, 2005. 2005. Yeah. Okay. So you had a few years of, you know, property boom, right? Yeah. To right. get settled down. And then just, yeah. uh, just as you got settled, then along comes a great recession. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, we would have some closings and we'd, you know, paydays. And then all of a sudden we didn't have any for a few months. So that was 
definitely challenging. I think at one point I ended up getting a job, right? In bartending. Yeah. bartending at night, just, you know, so we can make ends meet. We would knock on doors during the day and, and I would go work at a bar at night. <laughs> so. so I think part of the key to, I don't know if you sense that in the story, um, I have a very supportive spouse and, and, I, don't, and, That's right. I, and I don't know, I know it's challenging for a lot of people and, and uh, if they don't have that support at home. And mm -hmm. one of the, the keys to us is that um, no matter what we're we've through. gone through in life and what challenges we face is uh, we've always had each other's back and she's, she's always been there uh, supporting my crazy visions at times, you know, but <laughs> she's always been there and uh, been there for the ride with me and, and, and supported that. I mean, even one a big challenge we had, uh, I don't remember what year it was, maybe 2009, 2008, I think somebody, we got sued for a, um, we had a property that we did a major remodel, took it down to studs, you know, right. replaced everything in the house. We thought so. Um, the plumber had left. He couldn't get to a section of the, of, of a piece of plumbing to replace it. So, mm -hmm. uh, cause it was like where it was located was just difficult. And so he just tied in on both sides to it. What happened to you right above the kitchen. And of course it was a high end home a high end flip. And of course, when these people were traveling in Europe, it busted and flooded their whole oh. house. And so they sued us. And so, um, you know, for mental anguish, we ruined their, their uh, European trip and all this. Okay. Stuff. But, uh, I was I, pregnant. So Joni was, was like seven, seven months, months pregnant. pregnant. Uh, and it was several hundred thousand dollar lawsuit, you know? And so, uh, and we, we, we settled and, and got through it and, and finished, but it was, you know, those kind of setbacks can, Put a lot of stress on a marriage, on a lot of stress on, yep. on a business, and anytime we, you know, we're not immune to those. You know, it's just we'll do what it takes to get through them. We'll fight through it and mm -hmm. and scrap whatever we need to do to make it happen. But but she's also always had uh, uh, been supportive in the companies and the business and, and never. Um, Never thrown in the towel. No. So I, give it, yeah. I mean, if we're, I, I never had that poor me mentality, you know, it's like, all right, let's, yeah, we are where we're at right now. Let's get up and figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And so, so the great recession, that was a pretty rough time. I guess well, it was a rough time for everybody. I remember getting my ass kicked during it as well. <laughs> and um, how, how did you position yourselves to, to take advantage of this huge boom that w that happened in Texas and continued for many years? What, what way did you manage to take advantage uh, of that? So, so, so something that Joan and I have always been really conservative um, in nature. And so mm -hmm. um, even through like from 05 to, so, so Texas was different than a lot of places in the country. So we, we don't have very high peaks, but we also don't have very low valleys like a lot of mm -hmm. other places. And, and we don't have big booms and big busts. Um, yeah, not like Florida. No. Right. So, um, so, so Texas was different. We didn't really feel the recession until about 2010. And even okay. then, prices only adjusted about 5%. And so, wow. so it was very, we didn't, we didn't really experience much. And we were, because oil was so strong at that time too we were that led us out of the recession so we were the first city in america to hit our pre-recession numbers um coming out of the recession so um I, I think we were very fortunate to be in a very good market but uh mm -hmm. something that helped joni and i too was when everybody was making just crazy money you know in, in six and seven um joni and i were just still making our small uh, profits off, you know, $150,000 house while people were, you know, going into higher end properties or doing stuff in Vegas, even though they lived in yeah. Texas. Hey, the tortoise beats the hare. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in that club. I'm in the get rich slow club. Uh, yeah. you know, same, same as, as you guys, I think yeah. that's, yeah. yeah so that was nice. the key. And, and we're so, still in business. <laughs> so it, I, I saw so many people, you yeah, know, lose their, uh, shorts lose their short, yeah, go claim bankruptcy, lose everything. And, and we never, we didn't, but we were just doing our small little deals and, and uh, we've always been made small incremental improvements and changes. There's never mm -hmm. been, uh, I think one of the questions kind of that, you know, to preface the show that you, you had sent us was, you know, has there been a, a big altering deal that just radically changed or something 
huge uh, and and that's a great question because it's you know and, and i hope that people that your listeners and people can understand that is that we've never had like just some deal that just made us a million dollars and just totally you know right. project it's always been just small growth but just consistent right. and over a long period of time 20 years um those compounding um effects and and profits and changes and growth makes huge uh steps you know 20 years later right. and and um there's not a, there's not a, a get yeah you weren't trying to buy a house for 600 and spend 150 yeah. and sell it for a million bucks you're not you're not hunting elephants you're out trying to get those rabbits right and you're getting right. those those hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses and trying to make your whatever 12 15 percent right. return or, or whatever it might be time and time again correct and that's what's kept us in business and it's we've never got rich off one deal but but mm -hmm. doing hundreds of them over you know 10 years it, it really makes a huge difference so yeah that's brilliant and speaking of hundreds of deals over years and this is something i've struggled with because we, we we scale like that to going from 20 30 deals a year to 100 deals a year i mean how did you balance building your personal portfolios uh with selling to investors because i know you know when you're especially when you're doing turnkey it's very very tempting just to sell everything you can get your hands on because they're they're knocking on your door and it's a this profit that you can bank um what way did you balance that it sounds like you built a portfolio in the early days did you kind of so, switch that to something else or did you no, stop building or how did it work yeah we're laughing because i think it's a great question and i think we struggle with that as well i yeah. mean early on you know we the ones that we actually kept were not necessarily the ones we wanted to keep they were the ones that we could right. sell the ones so. you're stuck with yeah okay yeah, exactly. so, so so a lot of the bulk of our portfolio at the beginning was built on on bad deals you know like ones mm. that I, the rehab was through the roof and we're like well we either going to take a twenty thousand dollar haircut or we're going to keep it and Right. I'll tell you, I, some of our best deals to date have been ones that we kept. We kept mm -hmm. that they. I probably owed just as much as what they were worth, mm -hmm. but ten years, fifteen years later, um, you know, they had doubled, tripled in value yeah. on appreciation and growth. And then, of course, the tenant had been paying off my mortgage during all that period of time. And so, deals that I paid retail, I was in them for retail ended up being back in 2010 that happened i think we were yeah. we got stuck with you know several that we couldn't sell we're like yeah. oh, we'll just keep it in our own portfolio a couple of we just sold recently i was like wow yeah they were huge huge profits like doubled in value within a eight or ten year period and so it's, i mean so and, did and you have a formula now where you decide well we when we make x amount of cash we're going to put y percentage towards accumulating some ourselves or is it very more ad hoc and random like it has been with me yeah so it, it, i would say more uh random than 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 actually deliberately planning but um we did have a asset, asset. goal mm -hmm. so i had a i had a dollar amount that i wanted to build up in passive real estate um mm -hmm. because i felt like when i got to the, that package or that that valuation um to, when I got to that number, uh, I could pay it down to a, a certain number and that would provide me the lifestyle that I right. wanted to, to retire on. It provide me a seven figure income for the rest of my life. And that, that's how I kind of, uh, figured it. So we hit the asset number. We're not quite a hundred percent paid to where we want it to be, but I hit the asset mark. And so we stopped. Um, Brilliant. and then recently so now you're just waiting for the mortgage to get paid down and, and the cash flow that jump right, up right right and so we've so we've sold some during this year um some of that because we're trying to some of the what you know you get a property that just not performing as well as you think it yeah would. just high turnover yeah a lot of expenses so we sold some of those and we're trading them into um our duplexes or our new construction i, I like the product that we build mm -hmm. and so um I've been that's what I was about to ask you. What, what's the mixture look like? It sounds like you've a lot of individual units rather than like five apartment complexes. It sounds a little bit more. Yeah. So, so it's 70, uh, we have two commercial buildings. Uh, so a uh, office building in Houston and then a uh, self storage office building in New Mexico. And then, okay. we, just, and then we have 74 rental homes um, Brilliant. Uh, in our portfolio. So we, um, 
but I'm trading some of those older properties and, and trading them into our new construction duplexes. Um, mm -hmm. I like the product. I, um, I want something newer in our portfolio. Um, and so I've been, uh, last year we kept 10 new construction single family homes because I wanted um, the single family product. So I've been delivered in, lately in the last couple of years, I've been more focused on what mixture of old to new and uh, I wanted everything we have in the 74 is single family homes. And so mm -hmm. I moved some of that to the duplexes that are. And are they all in, in like Houston and Albuquerque or do you, you spread them all over the place? Houston uh, and Albuquerque. Yeah. So uh, the, we're about 50 in Houston and then about 24 in Albuquerque. Yeah. That's brilliant. And the, the intention is just to kind of hold on to those and, and kind of trim it and add more as you go along. You're, you, or do you have some big plan when you're 60, you're going to sell them all and put it in a, you know, 5% fund somewhere and, and you don't have to deal with it. Done. Uh, so, I mean, we have no intentions. Yeah, uh, right now, I think we're yeah. early days, home. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's days you go home though, and you're like, man, I'm selling it all. I'm, I'm done. But yeah. 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 Not, not too many, but yeah, the, you, you, you do get them. And I mean, that, that's, that's a hell of an achievement. That's, that's really impressive. And, you know, my experience, you know, people like, like you guys that get, uh, important stuff done you do it by taking sustained almost stubborn action uh, yes. based on those goals you've set and, and I think a lot of people will find that statement easy to agree with but obviously it, not everybody is, is wired like that what is it that you help that you think holds you know most people back from from doing that from stepping outside their comfort zone to do those things I think their own mindset the self negative talk you know that they tell themselves and honestly, I mean, not having the support. I mean, I think mm. Rashawn and I, you know, we didn't have anybody else supporting us. Our family thought we were crazy. Our friends right. thought, you know, we were crazy. Like, what are you doing? You know, you're never going to make an income doing that. And just having each other, you know, to support, I, I can see where if somebody doesn't have that spouse, then I mean, it could, you know. It could be more difficult. Yeah. But yeah, we, uh, I think, sure. I think people are concerned a lot of times with uh, what people are going to say. And I think that yeah. a lot of them back because, you know, um, they're not going to support them or they're going to, you know, think. And so don't get me wrong. We've had plenty of those people in our life. Um, yeah. And yeah. many of whom have your best interests at heart, but they just they, don't they do. see yeah. it the same way you do. Right. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, we've had an uncle that told Joni, like, like, people can't take you serious. There's no way people take you seriously. And, and stuff like that, like comments that you're like, wow. And, and uh, but we, ne it's never stopped us, but it's, it's definitely fueled us. Yeah, it's actually motivated us, yeah. um, you know, fueled us up to like, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but I, th I think people sometimes hold back because of that fear of just what uh, the public or their appearance and what's going to, and uh, I think you got to, not worry about the outside world and just focus on your house and you're you're not oblivious that you're not making you know but you're you're focused on what you're doing your habits um and being consistent i think that's one thing that we've done very very well is we've always been extremely disciplined and consistent in our actions and our habits yeah. and uh and you hanging around with, you mentioned that you hang around yeah. with people that right. are a little older yeah. than you. Are, are, are several of those people also successful in, in, in real estate or successful in, in entrepreneurship? Exactly. In entrepreneurship. So, I mean, that's the thing too, like who you associate with, you know, if you, um, if you want to be a millionaire, then you want, you're, you're going to hang out with millionaires, you know, you, yeah. who you associate with. So I would say half and half, but yeah, half are like real right. estate related, made their money in real estate. The other half made it in, in business. business. Yeah. But a lot of, they understand, I think part of it is just, they understand our mindset and what we're trying to accomplish. And then also, um, they, yeah. Get, they, yeah. And I, I totally get that. And I totally get the, the kind of, you know, family members and extended family members in particular kind of looking askance and it hasn't really been my case as much because I left I'm, I'm 41 now and I left Ireland when I was 22 so all those guys are thousands of miles away and don't really know what I'm what doing do do? anyway and they didn't have a chance to tell me not to do it but I, I totally know that it's an extremely common occurrence for, for people yeah. to say are you sure why don't you just get a job with a with a big company or go right. be a lawyer or whatever but oh, yeah. I think another reason that people 
don't take kind of dramatic action to improve their their financial wealth or improve their you know financial freedom is that they're actually worried more not not about what their uncle's going to say but more about how much of their own life balance it would upset if they took a different turn and that, that they're worried that it's going to mess up my relationships with with my wife or my kids or my my home or whatever i mean how do you guys balance you know family and fitness and, and fun with with running this ambitious fast-growing business yeah. I mean, we're, we have a set of priorities and routines and, you know, we, we call them four buckets. We have our spiritual bucket, our, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our uh, family business and our health. And if, if it doesn't fit any of those buckets and I mean, we say no a lot, you know? Right. Um, and so, I mean, we've just been very, um, uh, I mean, I get about five fifteen every morning. It doesn't matter you know, to, to work out. That's the first thing that I do when I get up, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, and, We've just really set hard priorities. Yeah, so I mean, morning routines. Um, so we, we both get up that early. We both, uh, because it, it's hard to get everything in in the day. Um, and so, you know, we get up, we have quiet time. We have, uh, we work out in the mornings before the kids are ever up. So that, you know, they're, uh, we have two young children. So. Um, it, the sleepers by the sounds of it as well. What's that? And good sleepers by the sounds yeah, of it yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing too, is that, you know, our kids, since they're really young, they go to bed at 8.30. So that's kind of our time, you know, yeah. so yeah. we're able to... So I guess the, yeah, to answer your question is, is number one, we set uh, priorities and then we we have daily, we and people might say, golly, they're way too uh, structured. <laughs> but then, I mean, I, you ask, like, how do we get it all done? I mean, I don't know. Uh, that's how we got it done is we, we've been very structured so i think i think it's the only way you get it done and and, and yeah. st structure is almost i think a contradictory term because by putting the structure you actually get more more freedom to, to right. get right. more done with your fitness or your family or your your holidays or, or your whatever it is just by having a structure enables you to do it otherwise you know it's too confusing to take decisions on, on our big decisions anyway right yeah. but we've uh yeah just been structured like you said our kids are structured they go to bed early and they but mm -hmm. it, that allows for her and I time, you know, at night, at the end of the day to relax and, you know, not talk about business and just focus on each other. And we have date nights with our children too, you know, to make sure that they get the quality time. So I'll, you know, have a date night with our son, Sean will have a date night with our daughter, you know, and so we, we really try to make them a priority. And the, probably the biggest, one of the big things to manage and all that is, uh, it did, trust me, we're not perfect at this, and, and it, this is something we've been working on constantly. But sure. it's, it's number one, being extremely present, um, mm -hmm. no matter where, what situation. So, we're, 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 like when you're working out in the morning, we're very present in our workout. We're not trying to check our phone and do all that because that's the time we set. And then being present with yeah. our kids at work, we're very present in meetings and and um, phone calls and all that. And then at night, we we put our phones up and it's time with just the family and weekends. We don't work weekends and that time we really, you know, cause we're gone from our kids all day and, and we're right. upper, but we try to really focus on night and weekends with our kids. And so we're very trying to be very present with them at, yeah. at night. So, yeah. We give a hundred percent at everything that we do at that moment. Yeah. And, and I'm not perfect it. at it. Yeah. No, look, look, I, no, nobody's perfect. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the last person to, claim to be perfect as well but I've, I've similar kind of habits where my my phone goes on silent and in the office at 7 30 you know every day and i don't look at it again until about 7 30 the next morning you know and um i had just an example this i had this friday morning booked off for about a month so that my wife and i could take a leisurely walk go for a leisurely coffee come home go to the pool for an hour read our books and have lunch together and that's that was it that's the only way i got it done is because it was in the calendar for ages and you know this right. this weekend we're renting a boat as a family we're bringing a picnic on the boat and we're going to do a bunch of stuff and it's because i had it booked a long time in advance and if i didn't you're just yeah you're you're, yeah. you're tempted okay well i'll just go and check my emails on saturday at 12 o'clock when right. you know it could be something much more interesting that you can mm -hmm. do but if you don't plan it and I like those, I like the way of, I like that bucket analogy and, and the, yeah. the kind of times you have for each bucket. That's, that's nice. Um, and uh, just, just checking your phone. Like we don't do it in the morning. Cause like you don't realize how the, the phones are awesome. I love it, but, and I can run my whole business on my phone, but like 
that right. one negative email that you get, you know, that's just going to derail your day. Yeah. You know, if you read, if that's the first thing that you read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'll distract you for, for the evening instead of, right. you know, having fun with somebody, you'll yes. just be thinking and tending to write some big long email on your phone, which takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I hear you. And, and look, this this year has been, you know, one of the craziest years in everybody's lives. I think a roller coaster for us all. I went from working on my own at the home all the time to having everybody in the house all the time. And, but there's a lot more important stuff going on than that. But, you know, for, for those of us in real estate, you know, that have avoided any serious health issues, I think we can consider ourselves pretty, pretty fortunate at how real estate is done. I mean, how has COVID affected your, your lives and, and, and your business, um, you know, these last six, seven months. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, it's actually, we've had one of our better years and I think part of it is because we um, have multiple streams of income, you know, um, different nice, businesses, yeah. you know, we have the property management company, we have the plumbing company, we have mm -hmm. the remote, remote team member company. And I think uh, if anything that we suffered was, there was a, a period of time where we had maybe a couple of months where we didn't have any closings, you know, um, that right. kind of came to a Yeah, so in sales, we had like, I don't know, a handful of, of canceled contracts and people got nervous. Um, and so oh, yeah. uh, the, the turnkey side, uh, we had some canceled contracts with some people, really people get nervous and we did everything to, to, to mitigate that. But uh, um, how about the property management, those 1500 doors? How, I mean, were they... We, collections pretty consistent yeah for... and i and i think um you know sean and i have always been where you know um if if something happens an emergency like we get on it right away we were we were extremely proactive at the very beginning mm -hmm. and so our collection ratios were at the upper 90s the entire time um and i think Brilliant. it's because we were we were just proactive with it uh, we didn't put our head in the sand and you know we <laughs> We were gonna plow through things. I mean, we made some strategic changes. We waived late fees. We worked with people a lot right. more. But you we know. were in front of it the entire time and yeah. we adapted, you know, to certain situations. Change the way we show property, change the way, you know, um, we, we, we went to- maintenance, inspections. Like we, we changed everything very quickly. Yeah, going to doing videos of the houses and doing online tours and I mean, just yeah. radically change in a, in a very short period of time. And, and don't give me, we have an awesome team and I think that's what it comes down to it. So yes. yeah, we have 35 employees um, and we, we got a very strong leadership team and mm -hmm. uh, that, that uh, we accomplished more this year than we've accomplished in any year, right. which is it's, it's it's crazy to think. Yeah. But we got Does that go for the new construction as well? Has that been yeah. firing on all cylinders the last couple of quarters? Yeah. Yeah. And that was the one thing that was considered an essential business was construction. So <laughs> we never, we never stopped. We just kept building. Uh, luckily, the city kept their all their inspections, like um, inspectors going and inspections. And so we never, nothing stopped. So um, we're very grateful. And that, that was awesome that, that that happened. But yeah, we've been firing on all cylinders. And then in the last two months, um, because interest rates where there are like, mm -hmm. un, un, the, the, the demand is like unreal. Um, I haven't, I, I'm, it, it's the hard, <laughs> I have conversations with investors like, like a couple a day and the conversations that are like, well, I, uh, we just sold our last property, but if you can hang with me, you know, like it, we'll, we'll have some more property for you in the next couple of months, but we, we keep selling yeah, out selling week to out. week and I can't, um, we can't keep up with the amount of demand that that's out there right now. But, that's that's, yeah. that's awesome. I'm I'm delighted to hear it, and I think your your investors are are, are getting great deals. And let's yeah. say I, I, long may continue, right? I mean, I, I don't want to take up much more of your time. This has been a great conversation. I think I could talk to you guys all day long. But do you have <laughs> any any parting thoughts to our listeners on you know maybe goal setting or, or getting in the right kind of mindset? I mean, it's right now is a tough time. And I think that like for, for myself and Sean, we have to, you know, there's a lot of negative talk out there. And so, you know, yeah. we have to, social media has been one, you know, we, we've had to kind of um, remove ourselves from that because, you know, that can, that can get to you. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think for me, fitness, health and fitness this year has been a it's been awesome because I've been yeah. able to channel my stress and anxiety through health and fitness, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're fortunate to have like, and, we, and I think we put in a lot of these measures early on, so like 
we have our, our businesses were set up to work remotely if they needed to be. And so mm -hmm. we, and that was not in, that just was how we were building it, but it was, and then COVID hit and we, did, we were able to remove remotely. But like we have a, a home gym and a awesome. fitness thing. So that never, so like Joni was able to really focus her energy on fitness and all that being home and to deal with stress and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So we, uh, but I think um, to what you're saying to, to uh, we, we spent a, Joni and I are, are big learners and we constantly are feeding our minds and feeding, and, you know, what we put in our, uh, what we read and what we, um, Listen to listen our to. podcasts. So okay. I, yeah, I recommend podcasts. Um, oh, there's so many out there, but I, 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 we're big podcast listeners. We read a lot of books, um, mm -hmm. but we're at least a book a month uh, we're reading. Um, and so, and then association, you mm -hmm. know, if you can, uh, and even with Zoom and stuff today, a lot of the smaller masterminds and stuff that we're part of still are meeting up um, on Zoom. Sure. So, um, I think those are the big things is, is podcast uh, books and, uh, and then uh, association. That's, sure. that's, that, that's really good advice. Podcast books and association. And speaking of podcasts, I'm looking at a very cool logo there inside yeah. the wolf stand. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, it is something that started again, this, this started in COVID. So, you know, this is not uh, started this year. It's uh, it's been a passion. It's been on the uh, um, uh, parking lot ideas that we've been wanting to do for years and so it's mm -hmm. uh um I, I we couldn't have done it without brett who's uh he, he's behind the this camera and all that yeah stuff. i know yeah. Brett. yeah so he uh you know brett's been instrumental in putting this all together i don't think we couldn't have done it without him we don't um he's added the production value to it but uh the premise behind it is is joni and i want to share our struggles our goals what's helped us get to where we are and, mm -hmm. and i would say joni and i are nothing um we're there's nothing like uh she doesn't like me to say this but like I, we're not smart we're not you know <laughs> she's very beautiful i'm not the best looking guy but like we but we we've, we've gotten to where we are by 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 uh, you know those everything drive, we spoke about hard work, work ethic you know and yeah and so we want to share those that hey like you know I don't care where you are or what's your past or whatever, there's opportunity for you. So we, we want to share what we, we've learned over the last 20 years. Uh, she has a big heart for women in business and uh, sharing those ideas. And, and also, like you mentioned with one of your questions was just, how do you balance it all? You know, as a, as, how do you have a, try to have a great marriage and a great business and a great family? And, you know, there's a, we, we've all seen people that have, maybe been successful in one of those areas but yeah you know, been but you know their, their marriage is totally falling apart or something like that you know you've seen those and so how can how can you be how can you have it all um and so that's kind of been our, our uh, yeah so that's been passion. on our entrepreneurial journey and you know and our tips and techniques that we've used along mm -hmm. the way in the podcast so that's awesome. Well, I'll definitely put a link to the show in, in the show notes. And, and aside from the Inside the Wolf's Den podcast, how else can people reach out to you or, or a little bit, learn a little bit more about your, your turnkey properties? So uh, visit InsideTheWolfsDen.com. All our social media links are on there. Um, Joni's probably bigger on social media than I am. I get tagged in all her posts or I'm the guy <laughs> behind the camera taking the photos. But uh, I mean, Instagram, uh, Joni M. Wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm um, Sean the Wolf. Sean the Wolf. And uh, so Instagram's a good one. Um, Texas Turnkey Properties .com is our website. Okay. And uh, yeah, we would uh, happy to speak with anybody, answer any questions. Any of your listeners got any, uh, want to hear how we do what we do? We, we're happy to get, we're givers. So if you got any questions, we're happy to answer those. So. That is brilliant. Well, thank you very much for, for giving me your time this afternoon, Sean and Joni Wolfswing. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank well, you. thank you, Colin, for having us. So there you have it, folks. That was Sean and Joni Wolfswinkle from Texas and TexasTurnkeyProperties.com. I mean, what, a, what, a, what an amazing couple they are. I really enjoyed that, that conversation. They're, they're very authentic people. They're, they're an open book. And I, I just love that they've achieved you know, so much in life based on the foundation of, of supporting each other and, and working together and, and just diving straight into every challenge and, and, and enjoying the, the, the fruits of their labors. 
and you know having a wonderful family and a, and a fantastic group of people that work with them that that is a hell of an achievement you know building those groups of businesses while having a, a balanced uh you know work life that's that's nothing easy as um as anybody will tell you it's it's, it's fantastic and, and obviously nobody nobody achieves anything in business really i think without a, a supportive spouse uh it's it's essential i've certainly had one and you know i lived in, in madrid spain for many years and came over here with my wife and family to to grow my real estate business that that took a big leap of faith and i'm very grateful for it and and you know just makes me very thankful for my wife as well you know just talking to those guys and and seeing how they they support each other in, in business and in life it's 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 great um i like their you know humility as well and their willingness to continue learning you know like they said they're they're avid readers they listen to a lot of podcasts they make efforts to associate with with people that they'd like to emulate there's there's a lot to be said for that to, to make sure you have that balance of hanging around with with people um that you want to be more like and, and that have that kind of outlook and, and mindset that you'd like to emulate that's that's very very important not not ignoring the guys you grew up with obviously but that that's a very um people miss out on that sometimes but it's, it's very very important and also the continuing education never kind of assuming that just because you've sold a couple of deals or a couple of dozen deals that that you know it all i mean if you ever go to any any mastermind groups or, or hang around with people that have built different types of businesses around the country i think you 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 get humble pretty quickly uh seeing what other people have done and, and what's left in your own journey if you care to continue and expand it so really enjoyed that conversation i got a lot out of it i hope you guys did too and if you do like it please do give me a rating or a review that helps a lot to get the word out there uh, share an episode on social media if, if you can as well uh, or just reach out through the website colininvestments.com you can send me an email you can schedule a call you can download a report listen to previous podcasts whatever you want to do i'll leave it up to you but I'm, I'm glad you've listened so far i appreciate it i really enjoy your support and i will be back very soon with uh, show number 22 but until then this is colin g murphy i'm signing out take care guys bye bye <music>